Hello, this is Team 4101K from Hillsborough, Kansas. We're going to talk to you about some of the problems we ran into with our launcher along the way. Um, you can see a link to our original video and description of the, the robot. Um, we will also be posting more about the robot soon, especially the new updates that we've come up with. So, the first problem we ran into was we had one gearbox. Now, the one gearbox um, caused a lot of friction because it had to power both wheels at the same time, and so there was a lot of stuff that could go wrong. So we moved to these two motors per gearbox instead of four driving one gearbox that was driving both wheels, and we had our wheels chained together. We found that that just did not work very well at all. Um, our next problem is we had um, the gears, after turning them on and off a couple of times, the, um, the wheels would just, they wouldn't come back on. It was because the motors were heating up when we stopped the wheels. So we added this ratcheting gear off of Rex 1727B's design. We'll put a link to his video in the description. Um, we added the ratcheting gear, and that has really helped it. It hasn't caused, we haven't had any problems as far as speeding up and slowing down since then, um, since adding that. Um, we also added IMEs because when we were feeding balls through, um, right when a ball went through, it would spike, the speed of the wheels would spike and go down. And that was a problem because we couldn't accurately shoot them in unless we were feeding them extremely slow. So we added these IMEs and we're still working on developing the program to do this. But as like simply when the ball goes through, if it decreases the speed of the wheels, there will be more power sent to the motors to bring them back up to speed because these motors, these can shoot way farther than the nets. So we have them running at about 60 to 70 speed in order to shoot it right to the net. But after that spike of power, we could lift it up or raise the power in order to bring the speed up. Um, the next thing we had is the spacing between our launcher wheels. We have 16 holes between the shafts on the wheels. That's 18 if you're going all the way to the shafts. Um, and these are five inch wheels, so if we stick this in here, um, you can see the compression we have on those. Those wheels are separated by the largest of the varying size spacers that you can get, um, the white ones that you can order. Um, then the up and down, we have um, four inches, so it's just over the size of the ball uh, in order to have clearance. We've also added these shields on top. Those help protect our wheels from any returning balls if they bounce back to us. We also decided to use the five inch wheels. We were running into a lot of problems with smaller wheels to try to save space. And eventually we just decided to try the five inch wheels and that solved all of our problems. So if you guys are having problems um, with distance and you're not using the five inch wheels, I would suggest using the five inch wheels. They just help so much more with uh, momentum wise too because the momentum is really what's gonna throw your ball. So this is our intake. We'll show you some of the problems we had with our intake. Um, first problem was we used the solid wheels in our original video, which um, didn't allow the balls to move side to side. So when the ball would come in from the side here, it would hit the side of the wheel, and it would cause the ball not to be able to come towards the middle where it needed to, and it would just jam everything up. So then we moved to these three flapped six-inch, it's their six-tooth sprockets with a flap every other one. These are large flaps. Um, and then we have the, the angled bars here to bring them in. We have the angled bars here to bring them in to the middle. Um, then just recently, actually today, we found a problem is that when they were coming in, they were still causing some problems when they came in from the side. So we decided to add a third wheel. We used to have two. And the idea with the third wheel is that the center of this one is off to the, other, the side of the ball, pushing it this way rather than before it was over here about where these, this beam is and would push the ball towards the wall causing it to be harder. Um, another problem we found just today was that the, these wheels were too close to the ground so when the ball got in there it would cause the flap to have a lot of friction. Right now the flap barely touches the ball and that has solved so much of the problems. We found after a while that our intake flaps were starting to wear downward and weren't lifting the ball very well. So we, we backed them up by putting a second one right after each one. And then makes them a lot stronger, but they're still flexible when you need them to be flexible. So here you can watch our, um, our intake in, in action. As you'll see, it just barely touches the ball and brings it up really quickly. And then we can bring the ball in from the side. And it slips a little bit, but it does, it's not a problem because the flaps just slip right past it and doesn't stall up this motor. So those two balls at the same time, they'll just sit and spin until it sorts out which one. Or we can reverse and sort them out our own way. But that just shows you that it's not a problem for a ball to be stuck directly under there. 
the flaps are just going to run right past it. Okay. So we've incorporated a potentiometer, and when we are in calibration mode, which is determined by this right here, this limit switch, we can turn this potentiometer to increase or decrease the speed of the wheels. And this allows us to calibrate the spots on the field where we want to shoot. So we'll slow this down a little bit since we are inside. And we'll show you launching a couple. Alright, start again. How low did you turn it? Keep in mind that the wheels are at a very low power right now.